In this video, I'm going to talk about combinations. Combinations are a bit like the less competitive brother or whatever of uh, permutations. If you don't know what permutations are, you should probably find some information on that. I think I have a video about it. I mean, you could watch that. I'm also going to use factorial represent uh, nomenclature, so it might be a good idea to look that up too if you don't know. Anyway, for those of you who do, let's keep going. So. When I'm dealing with combinations, uh, I'm going to use an example of like an art contest versus just posting art on your uh, bulletin board at school. So if I had an art contest and there were six entrants in it, um, I would want to uh, give them first, second, or third place. In that case, the order that they come in matters. So uh, the first... So let's say I have an art contest and there are six total projects and I want to award uh, money or medals or ribbons or whatever it is to the top three and there will be a first place medal, a second place medal, and a third place medal and that matters and I've talked about permutations in another video so if you don't know how this part of it goes you should go back and look at it but anyway if I did that that would be a permutation because first second or third is there's a difference between them it makes a difference but in this case there's 120 total options if I have six of play of those projects coming first second or third so there's 120 different opportunities for that to happen Commun combinations on the other hand would be uh, a much more sort of non-competitive version. So say I have parent-teacher night coming up as a teacher, and uh, I don't actually right now, but if I did, a theoretical world, um, and I needed to just get something on the wall of my room. I've just kind of gotten busy doing other stuff, and I ha have a lot of student work up, and I have six art projects that people have turned in, so I just want to put three of them on my board, and it doesn't matter. I'm not ranking them in any way. I just need three up there uh, to make it, you know, to people feel like I you know I am doing something so in that case I would do a combination so I would write that as sort of six I was gonna write a P there I don't know why C is the letter for combinations six C three now in a combination starting to look like a G um, in a combination the three that I pick I don't care what order they come in it's irrelevant to me you know sort of what they're doing uh, and there's a couple things that I need to talk about when I get into the uh, formula. So I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of um, vocabulary very quickly, or just in terms of identifying variables. N, of course, is the total number that I'm dealing with. And R usually sort of represents the special interest group. I'll call it the subset of interest. That's a better term. What that means would be the, the three. So in the permutation, R would be three because I'm first, second, and third place. Uh, but in a combination, it's just a three I'm going to post on the wall somewhere. Now, moving forward with this, uh, let's just look at only the uh, the setup with uh, projects one, two, and three. Like I label all the projects, I just write numbers in the corner, one, two, three, four, five, six. So let's just look at uh, projects one, two, and three in the permutation setup. Uh, the first, the project I labeled number one could be first place, uh, number two could be second place, and number three could be third, which would be very convenient, but you know, that's kind of lazy judging. But I could also have project number one and then three and two could switch. I could do two, three, and one. I could do two, one, and three. I could do uh, three, one, and two, or I could do three, two, and one. Those are just using projects one, two, and three. And if I start, like, uh, the next set down maybe, well, three isn't going to make it into the top three, so projects one, two, and four, and I could do all those combinations. But what you can see, really, in a combination setup, if I'm just picking them, these are all worth the same thing to me. I'm still just picking the same three. I'm picking project number one, project number two, project number three. It doesn't matter what order they come in. So instead of being uh, a group of six, <clears throat> sorry, I'm going to just break that down into one overall group. So it doesn't matter what order they go in. It's just this way. So really, for every six of them, it really just goes down to one. So, I mean, relatedly, if I have 120 total combinations, if I just break that into, if I say that every six is considered one now, 
I could just divide by 6 and get a combination value of 20 combinations of those numbers. That's really how it works. That's how combinations work. It doesn't matter if uh, project number 4 is first place or third place. It does, the places don't really exist. It's just I'm picking 3 very quickly. So it should give me 20 when I do a combination, and it absolute, uh, absolutely does. But let's talk about how that changes the formula. Now, the formula for combinations would be uh, uh, much like the formula for permutations. When I did permutations, I had n factorial over n minus r factorial. So what I'm really doing is taking the total number and dividing it by how many uh, extra ones that I have left over outside of my special interest group. So in this case, I would do, uh, for permutations, for instance, I would do uh, 6 factorial over uh, n minus r, so 6 minus 3, so it'd be 3 factorial. With combinations, I have to make an adjustment because in, in this case, when I have the 6 is the same as one thing, I need to make an adjustment for that, and what I'm going to do is just multiply it by r factorial again, because we're adding a new component that uh, we're dividing it further, whereas before we had to divide it into you know that subset of first, second, and third place. Now we're just dividing it into even larger groups, so it increases the amount of division that we're doing uh, in terms of like the number we're dividing by, the denominator and the fraction sort of thing is going to be bigger. So anyway, you move it forward, and I get uh, 6 here, 3 here, and uh, n minus r would just be or 6 minus 3, which is really just 3 factorial again. 6 factorial, 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 uh, ends up giving me 720. 3 factorial is 6. 6 minus 3 factorial gives me 6 again, so I end up doing 720 divided by 36, which gives me my 20 total combinations of those numbers. So really, as you can see, combinations is sort of like, uh, I guess some of my students might call it the hippie brother of permutations. Competition doesn't matter, it's just I need to pick a group and this is the one I'm going to pick. It's like picking at random. So there it is.